So now I'll go, that's the end of kind of summarizing. I'll, <laughs> uh, I want to talk a bit about uh, the future and, and why I think the future is so, uh, is so exciting, dangerous, but, uh, but exciting. So we had this uh, uh, slide by, by, by Shai about all the revolutions that we encountered. And, and I want to focus on the reasoning, uh, on, on the reasoning part. And, and it's very controversial. As you heard from, uh, from Yoav, Yoav says, well, there are only hints of, uh, of uh, reasoning. There are lots of failures of, of these uh, machines. Uh, you can give it, you know, mathematical problems and it will fail. You can give it, you know, uh, it will sometimes give uh, non-factual the data. It will be very confident. So you can be very negative and, and, and you'll be right. right. The point is, is, let's look at the half glass full and not the half glass empty. And the half glass full is quite, uh, is quite interesting. So I, I'll, I'll skip this because it's more or less what all what Shai said before. And, and, and I'll go into large language models. And, and I, I, the way I see it is just like the iPhone, the first iPhone, the 2007 uh, moment. The first iPhone, I don't know if you, if you remember, you know, wasn't that impressive. You know, it would heat up, the GPS would work for half an hour, there weren't much applications running on, on, on the phone. Uh, the only impressive thing was that you can, instead of a stylus, you can you know, use your finger to... Uh, but iPhone 3, 4, that started to create a revolution. Social networks were on the phone. The GPS worked uh, for, a full, uh, for a full day. You already saw that this is, this is a device that is really changing uh, society. So I think we are in the iPhone 2007 moment. And, and we really need to kind of look beyond the clouds in order to see the potential. Because it's very, very easy to see what's not good here, what doesn't work. But the point is, let's see what does work, and can we get inspiration from it? And this is what I want to spend a few, few uh, slides on. So, uh, as I mentioned in, in, the, in, in the panel, what's, uh, what's exciting about reasoning, that reasoning brings us to broad intelligence, and broad intelligence is something that we scientists in the past uh, five uh, decades we're never, we're never able to, to put our finger on, on how, how a machine can, can generate the broad intelligence. We knew how to generate narrow intelligence, and in the past decade, very, very good examples of narrow intelligence uh, applications. Uh, but generating broad intelligence is something that scientists did not know how to, uh, how, how to handle. And, and what, is a, what is the key point here is out of distribution. So machine learning is within the distribution. Reasoning is out of distribution. And, and what I want to show you with some examples, um, kind of the, these hints that we are at the verge of this out of distribution. Okay. So let, let's start. So Shai and I, we meet every day at least for, for, for two hours and, and we play games. So uh, let me show you some, some games. So this is a AI21, so it's not only GPT. AI21, by the way, has an engine. It's not yet as powerful as GPT-4, but it's getting there, okay? So I'm going to show you some examples of, of AI21, and then I'll go to GPT-4. I'll show you negative examples, but the negative example that I'll show you is with a positive spin. So that, that is going to be really the, uh, the point. So let, let, let's look at, at the query, and, and this query is, is non-trivial. For scientists, it's, it is trivial, but it's non-trivial. So let me, let me go here and say, so I'm, let's see, can, can, can you activate this one? Okay, so uh, uh, let, let's look at the prompt above, and I'll read it because the, the, the font is small. So set, next I will define the function t. t receives a string of n letters and outputs true or false. Let the substring from letter 2 to n minus 1, let's call it uh, w. If the first and last letter are equal, then apply t on w. So clearly we're talking about the recursive, but I didn't say the word recursive here, right? Apply t w. Otherwise, output false. It means if S1 is not equal to S Sn, output false. If the length of W is either 0 or 1, then output uh, true. And then I ask it to write the Python code of this function. So, so you really need to, to kind of 
think for a moment. It's not that complicated. We need to think for a moment what this function is doing. What this function is doing is, is doing a palindrome, right? It will output true if reading from left to right or right from left gives you the same, the same result. Okay? Now, I didn't say the word palindrome to the machine because it could be that while it was trained over the entire internet, the word palindrome was there, so he knows what it is. I didn't say the word palindrome. I didn't say the word recursive. Right? We all understand it's recursive, but I didn't say the word recursive. And the Python code is correct. And then I asked it, uh, you know, ABBA is true or false? And it goes through the, the steps correctly and outputs it true. So I'm not saying this is a genius, but it is a, a, a non-trivial uh, non uh, prompt uh, with, a successful, uh, with a successful answer. Let's go to another example. This is, uh, this is from a uh, paper from uh, Microsoft on GPT-4. Okay, so I, I tried all those examples that they mentioned in the paper on AI-21, on, uh, on AI and, and the majority of them works uh, very, very well. So let's, let's say, we have a book, carton of eggs, a laptop, a bottle, and a nail. Please tell me how to stack them onto each other in a stable in a stable way. So th this is non-trivial. You need to understand how the objects look like. You need to understand their weight. You need to you understand their geometry, right? And it, it does the, the correct jobs, right? Place the laptop on top of the book, place the carton of eggs on top of the laptop, bottle of water on top of the carton of eggs, and the nail on top of the bottle. And it said it should stable as the heavier items are on the bottom, the lighter items are on top. Again, I'm not saying it's a genius, but it's non-trivial. Let's take another, another step before we go to the negative examples. Um, so here's a conversation between Mark and, and Judy. Mark, I don't like the way you treated Jack last night. Did you see what he was doing? So he refers to, uh, 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 to Jack, right? He hit his brother on his head. And then the question is, what does Mark's intent seem to be? Give a detailed answer, and the answer is correct. What did Jack do? The answer is also uh, uh, correct. So th there is a non-trivial kind of logical uh, uh, reasoning uh, going on here in order to answer this question. Now, let's, let's, let's go a bit deeper and, and fail. But I'm going to give a positive spin to this failure. Other, uh, which is different from anyone else. Everyone else, ah, it's failure, it's failing, therefore it's not intelligent. Let's look at this uh, example. This example is quite tricky. It's from an IQ test. Okay, so let's read it. Three women sit in a waiting area with three pets. The names of the women are Mary, Karen, and Jane. The pets are dog, cat, and rabbit. It is given that the owner of the cat sits in the middle. It's also given that Karen sits next to the dog owner. Can you write a Python function that lists all the possibilities of who sits where and who owns what? You really need to think about this, right? <laughs> and, and normally you'll need a, a, a pencil and paper to write all the permutations and think about it. You cannot just, on top, unless you are a super genius, on top of your head list all, all, all the possibilities. Right? You need to, really need to think about it. So let's see what the Python code looks like. So this is, by the way, this is GPT-4. Um, and the Python code starts nice, you know, the woman and the pets and the seats. It, it looks like a, it, it takes a intertools per, per uh, permutation. It has men, women to pets and w women to seats. But then when it goes into kind of the logical steps, it fails. This is not the right uh, logical uh, steps. So we can conclude here that, you know, as, as, as many, many people say, you know, reasoning here is very, very uh, uh, limited. A human can do it, a machine cannot do it. That's it. But now let's, let's do the following. Let's help it. Let's help the machine break it down. So now, uh, a new session. So we give it again the, the three women sit in a waiting area, but now let us start by writing a Python function that receives a possible seating arrangement and pet ownership and returns true if the owner is of the owner of the cat sits in the middle. So what, what we're doing here, we're breaking the problem. We're going to break the problem into two and then ask the machine to also integrate. And ask the machine to write the Python code, and the Python code is correct. Okay, later I'll prove to you it's correct. So the Python code is, is correct. So this is part one. So we tell it, 
great. Now write a second function that returns true if Karen sits next to the dog owner. Uh, uh, dog owner. And it writes uh, Python code, and it is correct. Okay. Later I'll show you why it's correct. Now we tell it, great. Now given those two functions, write a Python function that prints all of the possibilities that satisfies both conditions. Right? And it writes Python code. Now why it's correct? You can have, you see there on the top, a copy code. Right? So you can copy the code of those two functions and this one, put it on your terminal, and run it. Right? Copy, paste, and you run it. And all the three functions compile, and you see all the four possibilities. And these are the four possibilities. These are the four permutations. Okay? So the conclusion here is that we're not there yet. But it does not look like a big stretch to get there. there there's kind of a chain of thought. It's like, it needs to be taught a bit. It's like sending a raw intelligence to school. It needs to be taught how to break a problem into its components. Because once you guide it onto how to break a problem, it does the right, does the right thing. Now, we know from previous papers that it's called chain of thought, that if you put effort kind of in a fine tuning by teaching a chain of thought on how to break uh, problems, it can generalize. So I'm not saying that we are there, but it does not look like science fiction uh, to get there. Right? This is why I'm, I'm, I'm very optimistic that in the non far future, we could have machines that could, uh, uh, that, that could reason. And, and the question is, what happened here? You know, that those language models were not trained to reason. So, so what, what happened? And our guess is that there are two things. One is in-context uh, learning, and the other one is training on code. So in-context learning is all the, you know, the few shot, the prompt engineering, the instructions that, 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 uh, that we give it. So for example, if we want to, uh, if we want to teach the machine to, uh, you know, multiply, two-digit uh, numbers, so we can, or three-digit numbers. So we can show it many, many, many examples and hope that it will uh, generalize and understand the laws of multiplication. It will not. In-context learning means I can, through the prompt, teach it how to multiply numbers and then give it numbers to multiply, and then it will generalize. So th this is kind of, so the in-context learning is, is a way to go, to go from in distribution to out of uh, distribution. The second part was training on code. I think training on code was, was an accident. So what, what happened training on code, is I think that OpenAI, they wanted to show Microsoft that they're also useful. They can do something that can generate money, generate the revenue. And then they told themselves, well, they can create a tool, it's known as Copilot, that will help programmers write code. So they started during the pre-training phase to uh, not only give text as input, but also give code, Python code, C code, and all sorts of code as, 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 as input. And during the pre-training phase and then through the human, uh, human feedback uh, phase, this, uh, and they created a product called Copilot with Microsoft, and it's very, very successful. The byproduct of it is that the machine learned how to translate things into, formal, into a formal language. In many cases, when you ask the machine, to answer a complicated question and it will fail, if you ask it to write code, in many cases it will succeed writing code better than answer, answering the question. And, and the ability, because code is a formal language that can represent any complicated reasoning uh, case. I think without training on code, we wouldn't have seen those uh, success, uh, success stories. So those are the two things that I think explain uh, where, uh, where we are. So now, uh, let's go about this a dangerous AI. I'm not going to repeat uh, what, uh, uh, what we said in the panel, but I think if we say, can large language models be aligned? I mean, can we, can we create a safety net uh, around them? Uh, this uh, paper, my students, by the way, I'm going to present it at the CS Colloquium in June 20 or 22. It's a Monday, I don't remember. Um, so uh, I'll provide, so whoever wants to 
know more about this? So the answer is no, they cannot be aligned. Okay, so, so you, 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 you cannot tame the machine. The second answer, the second is, is a kind of uh, self-driving cars. Can they be aligned? The answer is yes. This is what Chai told you about in his, in his talk. Uh, third, the AI alignment problem. Can AI in general be aligned? The answer is no. Okay, this is what Chai talked about um, at, at, at the panel. It's a paper of, it's in the 20, it, 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 three years ago. Uh, you can find it in our uh, websites. So where do we go from uh, here? And then, uh, this is the last uh, slide. Uh, what can society do to uh, mitigate? So the first thing that we can do is limit the intelligence. Right? This was the petition of six months ago. Let's uh, stop with GPT-4, not go beyond GPT-4 for six months. Why? Because I, Elon Musk, I want six months to catch up. Right? So, so limit the intelligence. So I have all language models be lesser or equal to GPT-4. That's not a good idea because if you limit the intelligence, a neighboring country would not, and you will be left behind, right? So it's a, so th that, that's not a good idea. Use human feedback to tame the machine. This is exactly what I told you before. Uh, you cannot guarantee alignment. No matter what you do, you can always trick and manipulate the, uh, the machine. A reinforcement learning in the wild, so interacting with humans while optimizing a reward function, the example I gave you with the IQ uh, test and, and the paper that, that we wrote. I think there, there is a room for regulation that interacting in the wild with humans while optimizing a reward function is something that has to be done carefully. And, and there is room for, uh, for regulation here. Um, Cybersecurity for AI. I think just like with the humans, we limit access of humans. I, I cannot go to NSA offices and read their uh, you know, secret uh, material, right? We, we limit humans. We have firewalls around humans because humans are bad actors. They can do all sorts of stuff, right? So in order not to create anarchy, we limit humans. There's no reason why an AI would have access to our uh, water pipes or have access to electricity grid or have access to all sorts of things that could create uh, uh, damage. So it's like cybersecurity. You have here an actor that if it has access to infrastructure could create a, a big problem. So the challenge would be not to limit the, the intelligence, but to make sure there are guardrails in terms of access to infrastructure. I'm saying it's tricky because if the AI is very, very intelligent, it may find a way no matter what you do in order to reach that infrastructure. But again, that could be a challenge. It's a problem to solve and not go and limit the intelligence because that is not, uh, is not practical. Once, once the genie is out of the bottle, you cannot put it back into the bottle. Once there is a path towards building machine intelligence, you cannot stop it. If you stop it, a neighboring country would not stop it. You will be left behind, and, and you'll be the fodder for the next, uh, <laughs> for the next uh, uh, revolution. So I think uh, this is what I wanted to, to say. So what I wanted to say here is that you know, the interface with the humans and computers, I, I believe there are going to an, a fundamental uh, change. We all see that in writing code, writing content, uh, summarizing large amount of text, more efficient uh, search. Our, our interaction with computers is undergoing a major, major change. Uh, you know, a machine is becoming an assistant. It will make mistakes. You cannot tame it. It can be manipulated, but it will still be, uh, still be useful. But I think the big thing is the rise of uh, reasoning. That will change everything. If we have machines that are intelligent and we can give them instructions and they'll be able to do things uh, for us, both in the digital world and in, and, and in, in the real world with, with, with robots, that could change everything uh, we know with all the dangers that we need to, we need to be able to, to handle. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for all this uh, beautiful day.